Right back here on Woodward Sports, Armani and Edwards, Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, Tom Mazaway. Uh, Want to bring in Wayne Larravee now, the longtime voice of the Green Bay Packers. 22 years with the Pack. Seen a lot of wins against the Detroit Lions, yeah, he Braylon. Has. He's seen a lot of frigid <laughs> games, too. Also an author, if these walls could talk stories from the Green Bay Packers sidelines, locker room, and press box, the great Wayne Larravee joins us now. How you doing, Wayne? Good. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic. Thanks so much for the time, Wayne. I'll, I'll tell you, um, and I don't know if you like when people say this or not, but, man, I grew up listening to you, listening to you uh, whether it was the Chicago Bulls or, or Big Ten sports, whatever the case may be, the Packers, it's a pleasure to speak with you. No, nice to be with you, but you're dating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Wayne? How's it going? Brother Noah's here just saying hello. My first NFL touchdown was at Lambeau in 2005. So it's always wow. like, always really? a good thing. Wow, really? I called that touchdown. I know you did. That's why I brought it up. So, yeah, it's always a good thing when I hear Lambeau Field. Like, ah, takes me back. Hey, wait, let me ask you about the Packers. Obviously, uh, such a big story this offseason, Aaron Rodgers, and, and all of the offseason uh, chatter that was happening there in Green Bay. And then, of course, week one was not the start that anybody wanted uh, in Green Bay. No touchdowns, just three points blown out against the New Orleans Saints. Just w- w- where, where, where's the Packers' mindset? We, we speculate here was that the exception or the rule uh to 2021 and and what will we learn about the packers this week on monday night well you know it's interesting because i think braylon could probably speak to this better than i but every season is different and every team is different and i don't care how many of the same familiar faces you have back in that locker room the next season is different it's a different way of doing things and i think everybody at this stage of the game is going through that because we don't prepare teams the way we used to in the National Football League. We don't hit in practice. Um, Most of the time, starters play a quarter, maybe two, maybe a half over the course of a whole preseason. And, you know, there's not a whole lot of uh, prep in terms of the physical aspect of the game. And and football is a physical game. There's plenty of concentration and emphasis on the mental part of it. But the physical part is something uh, that takes part in, takes place once you uh, kick it off at the start of the regular season. And most teams, I would say all across the league, I'd say almost all the teams, are not really ready for that. So what does that mean? That means you don't really know what you have uh, going into the season, and you start finding out the first week of the season. Believe me, the Packers are wondering. I guarantee you San Francisco wondering how Detroit rolled up almost 500 yards of offense and 31 first downs against that great defense. And, And certainly even Tampa Bay is wondering how a mediocre Dallas team, a very good offense but poor defensive team, hung in the game with the world champions and gave them all they could handle on opening night. Yeah, all those teams are definitely worrying about uh, that next taking that ne- next step. I actually, you know, Ryan and I talked about the end of that Lions game, and it just seemed like the 49ers just took their foot off the pedal. Like they just immediately thought they were going to win the game. And then when it was time to compete to the end, to actually seal the deal, they almost struggled. It's kind of like running a race where you ease up to think you're going to win and someone comes up next to you and you can't restart your gears. With all that being said, Watching that game against the Saints, it just looked like they were off all over the place. It just seemed like LaFleur's and Aaron were on the same page. The offensive line struggled. Uh, they let, you know, the defense of the Saints, who actually is good, Cameron, led by Cameron Jordan, Demario Davis, they always get to the quarterback. Uh, trying to find it in the passing game, the defense, it just looked like a cluster, you know what, all the way around. How much of that is potentially the distraction of Aaron not being there all off season, and I know this is a question you've gotten, but we got to ask it: him not being there, uh, training camp coming at the last possible second, and how much of it is that, or is it more so like you say, just give us some time? And like Aaron said a couple years ago, R E L A X. I think uh, we would have seen signs of this happening. You know, if that was a case where Aaron uh, and all that went on um, in the media. Um, we would have seen signs of that within the team during training camp, but we saw none of that. It was a very good training camp. Uh, the performance in Jacksonville was a complete shock to all of us that have been around that football team. I'm talking about writers, broadcasters, everyone that had watched a significant amount of training camp practices. That was a shock. Um, I think what happened to the offense in Jacksonville was they couldn't get on the field. Uh, they won the opening toss, deferred their decision. Um, at Tampa and, uh, you know, New Orleans started controlling the football. They, they, Packers had like a seven point, 
12 at one point they had 12 plays while the uh, uh, Saints had run like 28 plays in, in that first half so it was really that kind of a thing offensively they just never got into a rhythm and by the time they actually got on the field for an extended period of time they were already down 10 nothing 17 nothing um, defensively is what is really concerning because you're wondering is that the defense the Packers have this year um, and I don't think it is I think it's a much improved defense over a year ago but boy it did not look like that against uh, New Orleans so that's the real question right there and I, I think the game uh, the, the game began to uh, fall apart for the Packers on the defensive side of the football almost from the get-go Longtime radio voice of the Green Bay Packers, 22 years. Wayne Larravee is with us now. And Wayne, when, when you mentioned the defense there, and and this, this could be one of those shootouts, right? Yeah. Because the Lions have allowed 31 points, at least 31 points a game in their last seven uh, football games that they've played. Green Bay's defense, while they gave up five touchdown passes to Jameis Winston, he didn't really throw for all that many yards. I yeah. think he had less than 200 yards. I'm not even sure. How, not even sure how that happens but we could be looking at a lot of points this week at Lambeau is that is that kind of how you see it yeah I don't know if we're going to get a shootout uh, necessarily I mean certainly if you look at the performances from last week you would say as much but um, you know what imp- here's the concern the Packers have is stopping the run and I don't know if you guys uh, subscribe to this but I always believe even in this day and age of throwing the football and multi-billion dollar quarterbacks and all this passing game stuff if you can't stop the run you are not a good defense Okay, first, foremost, and forever stop the run, run the football uh, that's, that, that is the, the, the number one key to winning championships in the National Football League it still is today but um, the concern I have is the way New Orleans ran against the Green Bay defense Didn't expect that to happen. Thought the Packers would be much improved in that regard. And they gave up 172 yards rushing and 39 running attempts. Um, That's that's how New Orleans controlled the football game. That's why Jameis Winston threw for less than 200 yards and five touchdown passes. He didn't have to throw the ball that much. Uh, That's a big concern. Um, The thing that impressed me in watching the tape now on the Lions against San Francisco was how well they blocked for the running game and how outstanding I, I thought Jamal Williams and uh, DeAndre Swift were in taking advantage of the holes that were opened up. Um, I thought that Lions running game was legit, and um, this is going to be a big concern for Green Bay Monday night. And, Wayne, uh, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you next. You're, you, Jamal Williams is a guy you are very familiar with there in Green Bay. Yeah. We absolutely love him here. I mean, his attitude, the way he plays, the way he practices is just something that, that the Lions – you know, for lack of a better way to say it. <laughs> so, something seen, about getting those former Packers yeah, players here in Detroit. You know, haven't seen a lot of that lately yeah. over the last couple of years with Matt Patricia and, and that crew. But uh, just w- what did the Packers lose in Jamal Williams, and what did the Lions gain in that player? Well, they let, lost a good player. Okay, let, let's, let's go there first, okay? They lost a guy who can get you four yards a pop, uh, never fumbles. Um, is an excellent receiver out of the backfield, uh, can make plays in space, is a power runner between the tackles when you need a couple of tough yards, and uh, most importantly, you can leave him on the field in third downs because he'll pick up the blitz, and he picks it up as well as any back in the league, period. Now, uh, what the Packers really miss from Jamal Williams, not only that, they miss his personality. They miss the kind of impact he had on the chemistry of that locker room. And Matt, uh, Matt LaFleur mentioned it today. He said, we miss Jamal Williams. We miss him. Uh, you know, and he was talking about not the football player, but the guy in the locker room, the, the uh, presence he had and the uh, chemistry he gave that locker room. And it, it's tough. You can't keep everybody. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate they're unable to keep Jamal, but um, they lost something when they lost that kid. There's no question about it. And they knew it when that uh, whole thing went down. Wayne Larravee uh, with us here on Woodward Sports. Tom Mazaway here, Wayne. Oh, thanks for coming on. Wanted to ask you, take me back to last year, the NFC Championship game, and Aaron Rodgers and the pack marching down the field. Uh, first of all, at halftime, they let that long pass go to Scotty Miller, which to me I thought really hurt them. But then they come back and that they have a chance to, to take the lead or at least tie the game, if I'm not mistaken, and they kick the field goal. Th- is that the main reason? that Aaron Rodgers had seen enough with Matt LaFleur and this team, or was it something other than that? 
No, it had nothing to do with that because Matt and uh, Aaron are very tight. Now, Aaron obviously didn't agree with that decision to kick the field goal there, but understood when they had three timeouts left plus the two-minute warning, um, and they needed to get a stop, obviously. But nonetheless, uh, that wasn't the, the crux of it. Is it something that kind of irritated Aaron? I'm sure it did. He was disappointed that he didn't get a chance one more time to throw a pass into the end zone. Uh, but you have to go back to the play before that fourth down call when Aaron had a chance to run yep. the football and forced a pass into Devontae Adams uh, that had no chance of being completed. Um, had Aaron kept the ball, and whether he would have scored or not is debatable. Maybe not, but he gets inside the five-yard line, I guarantee you that. And at that point, Matt LaFleur goes for it. And, uh, by the way, that touchdown would have brought them within two, two-point conversion. They still would have had to make the two-point conversion to get the game tied. So um, they took the points where they could get them, and then uh, they, they hoped that their defense could hold the same. Um, they hold the uh, Buccaneers, and they were unable to do so. And uh, the penalty on Kevin King killed him in the end. Talking to Wayne Larry. Hey, Wayne, I want to want to bring it uh, back to this year, if I could, and, and just a big picture look at the NFC North. Everybody lost last week, and you know it's still to me the Packers and everybody else in this division. I mean, the Lions. You know, it's a rebuilding year <laughs> once again. How yeah. many times have we seen that Every or year. said that? Uh, you know, the Minnesota Vikings, I mean, good football team, the Chicago Bears, you know, how many weeks before Justin Fields takes over? But this is the Packers and everybody else. Uh, how, 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 does, how do the Packers view this year? And, you know, is it Super Bowl or bust for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers this year? Oh, yeah. They put all the chips into the center of the table, guys. Make no mistake about that. Um, and uh, they did it uh, financially, okay? Um, they restructured contracts to keep guys who are part of the 28 wins in the last two seasons of the two NFC title games uh, that they played in. They kept those guys around. They, they restructured contracts. Um, they've, they've, they're $42 million over the projected salary cap of next year. Um, the value of their roster right now, Uh, And roster value is not salary cap. We're not talking about but roster value, how much you're paying your team this year in dollars and cents. They're top seven in the league, and uh, they're top seven. So they have a high roster value this year. Uh, They are over the cap for next year. And what that means in in, uh, financial talk is that they are all in, period. So that's what this is about uh, for Green Bay, and that's part of what made that uh, game against New Orleans so uh, distressing. Wayne, we can't thank you enough for your time here on yes, Woodward definitely. Sports here in Detroit. Uh, Braylon and I, very grateful uh, that you joined us today, given the perspective from the Packers. And uh, we hope to catch up with you at some point along the way. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoyed it. Have a good one. You I too. You. Have Thanks. a great, game, the great Wayne, Wayne Lar- Laravie. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and that's really you know something to think about moving forward if you're a Lions fan too uh, Braylon you know as Wayne mentioned 42 million over the cap next year this division is in trouble is up for grabs yeah. in the years moving forward without an Aaron Rodgers without I mean let's face it Kirk Cousins is the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings is to me a non-factor it's a he, he's a non-factor kind of player uh, that probably is not going to be able to win you a division or a Super Bowl anymore. I just I, I think Kirk Co- Kirk Cousins is what he is. The Vikings are what they are, and I just I think this is a, a division up for grabs in the years to come. That's why this is such an important building season for the Detroit Lions and and you know the Chicago Bears. They went for it in Justin Fields. So, this is going to be a Lions and Bears situation, I think, in the years to come. I dislike Michigan State as well, but Justin, I dislike Michigan State as well, but Kurt always puts up points. He always puts points on the board. He always puts yards on the field. Last year, they led the league. Actually, they broke the record for most touchdowns and points ever scored. And their yards, they were number one total yards. So they always put up yards. Where they struggle is the defense getting rid of longtime DN Everson Griffin, who just wasn't yep. able to do it anymore. Like I think that's where you're seeing them struggles on that D line. Uh, they played Harrison Barnes in the offseason, so you know that'll be a good a good long term commitment for them. The Cowboys, they struggle at the secondary position in the O 
line. You know, even though Montgomery had a good game rushing the ball, that old Chicago, line. Chicago, you mean? Uh, Chicago. Yeah. I, sw- I switched to Chicago. I was, uh, my bad. I did switch. <laughs> switch. <laughs> Sw- flip the switch. But going to Chicago, the offensive line, they've been struggling. You know, the- Montgomery had a good game, but they've struggled as an offensive line, protecting Dalton, protecting Fields, and then protecting the rush game, and then the secondary. And the Lions, they're just rebuilding. They're new. They're a different start. So this, uh, this division, it will be up for grabs you know, moving forward in the future. I, I-, I like where – this division that it's time for some new blood it's time for some some shaking of the dice if you will yeah i mean 42 million over the cap next year for the green bay packers and who knows what's going to happen with aaron Rodgers? i mean once he leaves this division you know who takes over who who is who is that quarterback in the nfc north is it jared goff is it some rookie that they draft next year for the detroit lions but there's um it's really really fascinating to see gonna take a break uh there is an nfl football